This is Total Warhead and welcome to another early game guide here in Total War 3 Kingdoms. This one is for Lubu, which in my opinion is the very best faction designed in Total War 3 Kingdoms. It is played in the 194 A War Betrayed start date. I utilize Ultra, Unit Skill Size, Romance Mode, Legendary, Legendary, both Campaign and Battle Difficulties, No Timeless Characters. So Lubu's campaign works off of two mechanics and a menu that complements the mechanics that we're utilizing personal victories and momentum are the two mechanics we're going to delve deep into and then we have the greatest warrior system for getting statistical boost for both lubu and or faction wide now continuing the unique units that we get flying riders are a really powerful unit they do cause scare and the really advantageous thing about playing lubu with this unit is that you really want to have as much campaign movement range as possible to reach as many armies as you can every single turn and if you build armies with only heroes and cav units, you maximize your campaign movement range for your armies. So having armies of just flying raiders and generals attached to them is really valuable. Next, we have the camp crushers, which are for sentinel based characters. The utility that I would give these units is if you want to use San Majan, you use the camp crushers. But where they really work really well is that with very high momentum, you give extra melee damage and morale faction wide, the melee damage specifically, is for your infantry or melee units but the camp crushers get that boost and if you put them as the administrators if they're sentinels right as the administrators units you get six camp crushers in a garrison the ai is gonna be like oh hell no we're not gonna engage that it's too powerful we get really powerful generals Gao Shun causes minus 55 percent upkeep reduction to flying riders i think maybe camp crushers as well can't recall Diao Shan is really powerful because she's an Oath Sworn. And with Lubu, that means that if she falls in battle, we can get crazy statistical buffs to Lubu and heal him back up if he's weak. Really useful in the early game. Shen Gan has an AoE that lowers the statistics of generals around him. So really good if Lubu is dueling somebody to further reduce the stats of who he is engaging. And Zhang Liao is the key here. Zhang Liao has a Ruler of Righteousness skill. Which, if you face an army that is stronger than your own at the start of the battle, higher combat potential, it will bring up the stats of units and general. I think generals, I'm not sure if units as well, uh, by freaking 33%. Is it more melee attack rate? And another statistical buff. It is a really crazy advantage that you get Lubu to like 120 melee attack rate, which probably is higher than the max cap. So the whole campaign is to make Lubu into a single killing machine playstyle focus one man army and that is exactly what we're going to do he gets disloyal really bad trait we're gonna re-roll it that's one of the traits that you can actually re-roll for better ones or similar bad ones um when you use the faction council trait re-roll we definitely want to get the faction council aka marquis level by turn three we're gonna really prioritize that we also get feared really good and then formidable we want to get really good expertise and vanguard based skills that are good for faction leaders and how you best do that is by not executing enemy characters and by making sure that you don't try to um, lead the army. I'm not going to basically min-max that so much, but at the very least, do not execute enemy characters because you can get some really bad traits from high vanguard wuxing based characters. And you do not want to do that if Lubu is your faction leader. Continuing, we get faction-wide buffs of minus 15% recruitment cost for shock cav and 15% more melee damage. Additionally, we get plus three morale in enemy territory. Really advantageous things to take into account. I have a lot to get into because this is a this is total war guide, right? So we definitely want to set ourselves up on turn one by taking as much as we can from the AI on turn one and then declare one everybody and try to get Marquise, which is 150 prestige points by turn three. Let's begin. All right, to begin the campaign, there are some very important things that I want to delve into. We can engage the army of Shahodun and get these great buffs for our faction for 10 leaders. And we definitely want to take advantage of that. Now, continuing, something that I want to touch upon, I want to basically spend a lot of time focusing on each of the mechanics that we have. So momentums levels 1, 2, and 3 do not give any buffs. We're an idle dragon. Once you get to 4, 5, 6, and that's it. In those levels, we get 25 extra satisfaction and 20% more campaign movement range faction wide then we get flaming dragon which is a boost at levels 8 and 10 so you can get actually it increases in magnitude as you can see in these levels when you change the, the adjective from rearing to flaming you actually get more faction wide buffs 
So at Flaming Dragon, we get additional buffs to melee damage of melee infantry, more morale faction white and replenishment faction white. And if you end at the highest level of Flaming Dragon, you get 70 more satisfaction, 40% more campaign movement range, 30% more melee damage for melee infantry, and then, uh, what is it? 25 more morale faction white and 40 freaking percent replenishment, which is close to the 50% cap. So really powerful. Now, it is important for you to learn something that you learn implicitly as you play. If you're an idle dragon, you lose momentum per turn by zero. So you don't drop in momentum if you're in these lower levels of momentum. Now, if you're in between levels four and nine, you drop by momentum by one. But if you end the turn at level 10, you'll drop by momentum by two. So the key is that what you should do every single turn is to get to levels nine or 10. How you improve your momentum is by defeating characters with your faction leader. They can be injured and you engage them and they'll be defeated. So these are just ways that you can also be able to get defeat the generals even if they appear to be hurt in a battle. That also counts. And you just want to keep doing this over and over and over again. A great thing you can do to get more momentum is to farm rebellions. And a way that you can farm rebellions is by starting with Lubu's army in Hulao Pass. Make sure you have no infantry units. And then rush from Hulao Pass all the way across this line of regions all the way to Liu Bei's capital once you acquire it. And all of these regions can be reached and you could potentially get momentum maxed out and then utilize momentum in the ways you can utilize it in the campaign and then still be able to maximize it. How can you max utilize momentum? One way is to utilize the Inspire Commandiri um, assignment. It is one of... Actually, it might be like the strongest uh, assignment in the freaking game. It gives construction cost reduction. It grants Commandiri cor corruption reduction by 50%. Reduces construction time. But it does reduce population growth and it costs minus two momentum to initialize so if you get to max if you get to level nine or ten in momentum and you can afford to use minus two momentum to put this assignment you should put it in every single one of your commanderies as possible this assignment works really well in tandem to fix the chaotic rule penalty that you start the campaign with chaotic rule causes 30 percent more construction cost faction wide 20 percent more corruption and you have a lower limitation of administrators by getting minus one compared to other factions. The ways you can fix these issues is by reducing corruption through faction white leaders, corruptions adjacently with the indus industry building. The um, yellow building also provides that if you build it up in the court level, causing minus 10% corruption, and then that assignment also helps. And you can actually get 100% assignment reduction by combining Inspire Commandiri with Reward the Fill and then Corrupt or Counteract Corruption. And then Sentinels, um, with their great expertise, can help lower the construction cost by like 30% if you get a great Sentinel with high uh, expertise points. That is really like the main gist of momentum. The other ways that you can actually utilize momentum include utilizing coercion and diplomacy. So if we go to like Yan Bai Hu and we want to do a trade with him, we can just do this and then you do coercion. Coercion can even be utilized for like asking for money from uh vassals i can't recall if you can utilize coercion to vassalize someone but this is just like you can utilize it for a lot of options in diplomacy and it is really powerful and it costs minus three momentum to utilize you can also annex a region by directly attacking it if you right click a region and then just engage it you have an option to annex it if it's a major region or a gate pass and i hate this about gate passes it costs minus seven momentum to annex the region if you actually go for a minor region, it costs minus five momentum. Now, if you annex a region, I think you actually maintain the, your remaining army action points, which you definitely want to maintain. So it is really valuable because you don't necessarily have to have artillery in your campaign as Lubu, and you can maximize your movement by not having artillery or infantry units to basically reach settlements as fast as possible. Another thing that Lubu has when, utilize, when having momentum is that you can also utilize it... Um, or so the last way that you can utilize momentum is if you go to characters and you do inspire loyalty you can actually cause a great buff to satisfaction with a character by plus 35 for 10 turns at a minus one one time momentum cost and this lasts for 10 turns and it also deepens the relationship between characters this is really powerful to utilize to try to create oath swords with lubu so you can potentially farm or have multiple oath swords that you can utilize and replace them over and over in the campaign and the advantage that you have of doing that is that if you use Delshan for to create Fallen Oathstorm for Lubu and you recall her the next turn, or I think two turns in a row, you can potentially have her very wounded. And if she gets hurt in a battle, she'll die 
because she won't have any more resilience. But if you get another Ulf Sworn and you put two Ulf Swords in Lubu's army, then you have two people that can potentially replenish their resilience while the other is being hurt in battle. So every single battle, you can guarantee that Lubu actually gets a fallen Ulf Sworn to trickle up or to occur. What the fuck did I say trickle up? That makes no sense. So the next one that I want to talk about is the Greatest Warriors. Your Lubu's army has to defeat the characters that appear here. So you basically have to go through and try to defeat characters to get faction-wide buffs or buffs to prestige or, you know, additional prestige and buffs to Lubu. For example, we can defeat both of the Shahu cousins right here. And if you defeat them, you can get 15 more prestige. If you defeat the three kingdom, huh, Sun Shen instead of Sun Quan, leaders that appear here, you can get a total of 25, 25, 25, 75, 125 total prestige by defeating all three of them. And then you can get some crazy great buffs for example, night battles for Lubu's army, so you don't have to have a strategist. If you defeat all the great strategists, you can see their names down here if they don't appear already visible. There's some other great ones that you want to go for. For example, if we go down, we can get Poison Blade by defeating the bandits. And then we can also get Fatigue Immunity. Uh, where the hell is it? I think it's up here. Where is it? Yep. Fatigue. Oh, no. Uh, if you defeat Cao Yun, I can't find him right now. If you defeat Saoyun, you can get Fatigue Immunity, which gives you 25% more motivation and 5% more charge bonus for Lubu if he has Fatigue Immunity. And that works really well with Maintain Momentum, which is a unique post-battle loot or post-battle reward option that lets you actually regain all your action points after engaging an army at a cost of having your army being winned at the start of the next turn. You can really utilize that to your advantage. You can get Poison Blade, which can, which can help you really weaken a general by shooting them from a distance with a unique ability. Can get stock to get really close to pop the poison blade on the enemy and then blazing roar causes minus 50 morale in a large aoe which is just utterly disgusting and then Guan Yu can give you 25 percent more melee ap damage which is also great to use and then if we go down here there is other ones like sang he can give 25 percent more speed that is great 10 percent more melee attack rate from Jojin is also something that you really want to strive for you really want to try to limit as many characters as possible if you can defeat liu biao who really doesn't spawn that early you can get 20 percent more character experience which can net you closer to getting lubu leveled up he's 9,000 xp points from breaching level 10 he's at level 9 to start the campaign and then we can get guo si and sometimes you get characters into your own faction like sang liao you start out with if you actually put them as admins and, and release them as vassals, then you can just basically um, declare war on them and then defeat them to get their defeat traits. Oh, here's the fatigue trait for Cao Yung, which is nasty. And if you defeat Huang Zong, it means that you can give a bow to Lu Bu and you can get a lot. We're going to get a lot of bows to start the campaign. And it can really make him deadly to have a bow to take out a general and poison blade at the same time. One guy can get 5% more campaign movement range, which is great. Defeating the Juans can give you a total of... 35 60 total prestige and if you can defeat the yellow turbans you can get 15 more prestige and if you defeat he you get recovery which is good but i would it's kind of overrated people really love going for this i more so prefer that you get mending because recovery requires that you're not being shot at or taking or in melee in battle to recover it's a really slow recovery and mending is four times that you can use it but it can give you 2.1k healing if you use it melee evasion as well so it makes your battles move a lot faster if you're only utilizing lubu for battles believe me you're gonna waste a lot of freaking time if you just depend on recovery to get him healed back up so that gives you a good overview of good characters to go for and what to look for in terms of characters to defeat in the campaign it works really well to actually do this as total war because the ai prioritizes your faction so you can get a lot of enemies coming your way early on so the last mechanic that we want to talk about is personal victories. Now, I wish I really hate how this is designed. I wish it was a button be like or a, like a, a UI larger right below momentum. Personal victories can give Lubu's army up to 200% freaking post battle load income, 250 prestige and a huge penalty of minus 50 satisfaction for all characters, which can work really well with you keeping high momentum so you can get to 70 satisfaction and then a big penalty diplomatically. This can go up to 10k. But if you get to 250, you can get all of the bonuses that you see here. And you get this whenever your own faction leader, or his army, defeats a character. So you can farm personal victories really damn fast as long as Lubu has as much campaign moving range as possible and reaches as much enemies as he possibly can. As for your personal victories, how they increase these parameters that we see here over time is the post-battle loot income magnitude is twice your victory value. Your prestige is 2.5 times your victory value. Your satisfaction penalty is half your personal victory value. And your diplomatic attitude penalty is the exact magnitude as the victories. 
So for example, if we have 21 personal victories, we'd have 42% post-battle loot income, 53 more prestige, negative 11 satisfaction, and then negative 21 diplomatic attitude penalty. Note that the minimum value of the diplomatic penalty or attitude penalty is minus 50. Not sure why I didn't put a divided by 50 here, but who knows? The last mechanic that I want to talk about that we are not going to be using in our This Is Total War campaign is if we go to Diplomacy and we go to like Yam Bai Hu and we do Mercenary Contract, we can do a Mercenary Contract against another faction. So Mercenary Contracts last for 20 turns. And when you do these contracts, you basically have a bar that appears at the top that has like 25%, 50%, 75%, 100% uh, intervals. And they increase depending on Fame and Fortune. That's the resource that fills up that bar. And you get more Fame and Fortune as you defeat armies or take settlements um from the fa or actually they just defeat the enemy that you are engaging your contract against here i'm targeting the yellow turban rebellion so i have to defeat the yellow turban rebellion to gain fame and fortune every couple of turns you get the opportunity to potentially get a chance of getting a good rng on exceptional um ancillaries good ancillaries great ancillaries depending on what of those th of those levels you're in if depending on the level that you're in as well of the fame and fortune bar you can get great fa morale boost faction wide you can also gift settlements that you get for mercenary contract to the contractor to get a massive amount of money especially if it's a major region now the best way you can use the way you should use mercenary contracts is don't give settlements to the contractee or actually give them yes give settlements to the contractee or to the contractor as you try to defeat the army that you're against, the army the person you're against and then once you've left the person you're going up against without any settlements you then do a switch you can actually switch the contract versus your contractor and then when you do that it actually resets at 20 turns to restart the countdown at 20 more turns so let's say here I start the contract with Yambai Hu as my contractor. I basically gift Yambai Hu all the Yellow Turban Rebellion settlements. And then I switch it up. And then I make the Yellow Turban Rebellion my contractors and Yambai Hu my target. Then I basically have left my original target, Yellow Turban Rebellion, without settlements. And then I now take all those settlements that I gifted to Yambai Hu. And I keep all that crazy amount of money that I got from gifting all those settlements to Yambai Hu. That is really the best way that you can utilize the mercenary contract to your advantage, making it last up to 39 turns and making the most most in the amount of money that you can potentially get by basically gifting to your first person and then getting those settlements back. So the way that you should, you should look at, contract, at contracts before you get them is whoever you want to give you the contract, you want to defeat in the end. And then the person you're originally targeting in the contract, you also want to defeat. That is how you should look at this to maximize it as much as possible and make the most progress in your campaign. Something very important about fame and fortune resource of uh, mercenary contracts is that it goes up to a magnitude of 100 and it decays by one. Now, if you actually let the resource decay to zero, the contract cancels out, it's broken, and you get a diplomatic penalty with your contractor. Also, if the 20 turns pass and you haven't defeated your target, you also get a contract basically broken penalty and you get a diplomatic penalty with that faction that was your contractor as well so try to finish those contracts before they run out and make sure you're constantly engaging your enemy so you maintain fame and fortune as high as possible all right and now before we continue the actual progress engaging bat armies in battle we want to do a lot of shenanigans in diplomacy so remember this is this is total war campaign right there's no reason for you to have a high reliability negative zilch none now I think Lubu was designed to be a This Is Total War campaign because you actually get diplomatic visibility with everyone on the campaign on turn one, which is great. It means that you just have to let her warn everybody on turn one, and then you don't have to worry about this ever again in the campaign, which makes it really easy to manage. Now, continuing here though, let's go through which characters we care about getting stuff from. So, there are a couple of factions that start out with a lot of money on turn one. Salsal starts out with 5,000. Liu Bei starts out with 4500 and then look at mr juan Shao. he starts out with eight thousand dollars you want to grab all the money in the world from all of these factions the question is what the hell are you gonna do that so you make regular payments and then how this works is if you have zero or negative income you're gonna gift whatever money you have at the moment to this faction and it's gonna be divided by 10 whatever you have right now so if i have two thousand I'm going to be able to gift away 200. 
and then I'm going to request payment from him, and I'm going to ask for as much money as I can. As you can see, I can't even ask for anything for the guy right now, because he doesn't want to give me anything, and this $200 is not worth jack to him. If you actually are able to get money from him, you can actually be able to offer more, and that's going to be higher diplomatic value, and then you can actually get all the money that Yuan Shao has at the moment, and you're going to keep offering deals, uh, deals of 10, you know, of money per 10 turns, over and over and over again on the same factions to get all the great ancillaries that they have. I tend to go for all the silver ancillaries or good bronze ancillaries that factions start out with. So like the war axe is great to go for. Just try to rush these things and then go from there. And then from here, what I want to do is go through every single faction, look at what items they have, grab them. And then there are some that I want from certain factions, aside from grabbing money from those three factions that I mentioned. Shamoka has the red wind unequipped. We definitely want to trade for that item. That is number one. Then we want to also grab the Jade Imperial Seal. Jade Imperial Seal? That's Imperial Jade. Oh my god. Imperial Jade Seal from Sunche. He does not have it equipped. That's another one. And then I want to defeat Shao Dun's army. Then I can actually get peace with Cao Cao after doing that. And then I want to grab Cao Ren into my own faction because... It'll weaken the starting armies that he starts out with because you won't have this entire red in you and I'll get the honor manifested. So I'll get red wind, give it to Diashan, for example, and I'll get honor manifested and give that to uh, Gushong over or what the fuck is this guy's name? Shen Gon. Oh my God, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. Now to actually get uh, money from people, there are a couple characters that we really don't care about and we can just banish them. Now you should banish characters before you bring characters into your faction. So banish them at the beginning of your turn because if you marry people into your faction and then banish, they'll get the banishment penalty. But right now, they will not get it. So we banish this guy. We don't care about Ho Sheng either. That's going to banish him as well. And then we got Zhang Miao, who is not a bad character at all. But we can get plenty of strategies through turn one, including Fa Seng from Lu Shang. We're going to keep all the uniques, including Lady Yan, which who we will use for marriage purposes. Now we have $4,400 in the bank, right? And then we have steep penalties to diplomacy, but we can actually manage how low everything is. For Shen Gon, we can make him happier by getting him the minus 5% recruitment cost for this army that we're standing in. And the reason why we want him to have that is because we're going to try to put the army to be fully cab units, no melee units. So I want to replace the G infantry that Lubu starts out with, with actual cav units. And then that will maximize my movement for this army. Now with all this money that I have, I want to go back to Diplomacy and, con and start the shenanigans. So other characters that I want to marry into my faction, aside from Sao Ren, include Yan Yu, who's going to be my faction heir. That'll get 5% more melee evasion faction-wide, which is the best boost you can give to auto-resolve. And that's going to help Lubu get 5% more melee evasion. Aside from that, you can trade for both of the Juan's sons, and then that will greatly tank the satisfaction in Juan Chao's faction, making potential great, unique character turncoats that he gets be become available. Along that same note, we can actually marry Liu Jian's son into our faction, who's a commander with high uh, authority. And if we do that on turn one, once you get to second marquee, you can get Fa Seng as a freaking Turnco character recruited. That is so freaking good. Now, we can also get Guo Xi from Li Jue's faction. Those are two characters that we want to grab into our own faction ASAP, as they're really valuable. Guo Xi is a great faction leader with, 10 with plus 10 military supplies and minus 10 percent construction cost and Faseng has an ability that is really strong that can be utilized to basically snipe enemy lords so we'll have a third item or a third hero to snipe enemy lords at the beginning of the battle with the two bows that i'm gonna get um the red wind and honor manifested along with Faseng. other characters we want is the entire shishi family we're gonna bring into our faction and we're gonna make sure they stay as distant relatives so they have free upkeep and we can utilize all those characters for diplomatic purposes King Mulu's bell will get 15 more morale for armies than the local commandery that we're standing in. A great item to also get. And then from there, each of these factions might have other great things that we want to go for. Zerong has a female that we were married to Lubu to get minus two construction time with Clerk. And then aside, and then on the same note, if we go to Liu Biao, he actually has Liu Shi available for marriage who has Clerk which will mean that we can potentially put into the faction council or into the court once we get to emperor, which can be done really fast. Two characters that can lower construction time by minus four, which com which basically compounds further with the minus one construction time from the con um, supervised construction co uh, sentinel assignment and from the inspire, com uh, inspire momentum or inspire commandery assignment that's unique to Lubu. I'm just going to fast forward through everything that I'm going to do 
before declaring war on everybody in the campaign. So something I do to basically exploit to best friends is I go here and then I offer all the money that I have at the moment. And then from there, I do a single make payment. A penny will do. And then what the make payment will do, it'll boost the current attitude that you're at. And then the money over time will boost the trending towards. So you can actually get this or both of them boosted up as fast as possible, offering them at the same time. And once you get to best friend, the other diplomatic deals that you want to do are more easily available. And what we want to do with um, Juan Shao, um, with Cao Cao, and with Liu Bei is boost them up as high as possible to make sure the marriages actually occur with them. Juan Shao starts very negative, so it's impossible to get a marriage done with them unless you actually exploit it to get to best friends. All right, I have gone through every single faction and asked for all their money and actually kind of evened out to 100k, which was kind of interesting. So all, well, all the factions except the Nanman. So I asked for all their money. Oh, and except Lu, um, Sasao, I'll be 5k more. But now I'm going to want to trade for some of the items that some of the Nanman have that would be good to get. And there are some items that are just like that I have at the moment that are not part of like sets that I can definitely give up. Like I got Noble's Leather, I got a Tempered Iron Skin, and then there are some items here that are not necessarily too bad. We can trade all of this, minus 2.3, make a little bit of payment, and then let's make this deal. There we go. And then, of course, what I really wanted was the actual Mulu's Bell, so we're going to get that as well. And, of course, we don't care about that one, not part of a set. He already has pretty good items. Okay, so he actually... Oh, shit. 
and then Let's see you definitely want that but first the bell so for the bell there should be some items here that are not part of any set that i definitely want to trade that are bronze items so or um what do you call it silver items so yeah really big negative um makeup that i still have to do let's bring this up there we go A harmonious deal. and then continuing the birds speak to me he does have this which i do want and then continuing there's a bunch of spy masters i think two of them would do and i can still give up a little bit more money there we go okay a worthy proposal. the next one is king shamaka or shamaka there we go and then if we go here Let us he has oh shit he has a concubine too bro what is going on oh my god okay here that is exactly what i want to get let me trade this and let me see anything else that's not part of a set there's some crappy ones that are not part of sets i mean that are part of sets that i'm just not kind of prioritizing get engineer okay let's do this there we go all right in 1200 and we got the ancillary now aside from that we already got the imperial jade seal if you want you can actually farm the items from the rest of the nanman if you actually want to spend the time doing so like maybe king dual c does have good stuff as well but aside from that let me see confusion yeah so aside from that though now it's time to start doing the marriages so a lot of shenanigans to do so first things first we're gonna go to diplomacy we're gonna divorce lady yan and because she shares a child with lubu she can start the divorce sim and that is actually something we really want to take advantage of at the same time we can actually adopt uh Dioshan into our um family and that give me another distant relative to utilize for marriage purposes huh lubu is Dioshan's dad this is really fucking this is really 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 weird so anyways now we have two distant relative females and one distant relative male that we can utilize to marry people into our faction and there's a lot of people we definitely want to bring in also, let me not forget, taxation, bring it up to the max, because we want to farm rebellions in every single location in the campaign. So yeah, we have a lot of money. We want to just go in and basically trade or get peace with Sasao. But before doing so, I want to engage this army that's over here. To make it happen, though, I want to improve Shengong's um, low happiness. And also, I want to reduce the recruitment costs that I have in this um, for this army to recruit the two cav units. Gaming and generals of the left will fix his uh, happiness situation a little bit. Let's give him this. And then from there, we're going to go to Mr. Lubu. And then we can give him flying riders. Or we can give him heavy shillian calf. Heavy shillian calf have way more AP damage and charge bonus. So they do a better job as a calf unit than what the flying raiders could potentially do. Now, these guys also have 10 more bonus versus calf. So they're going to be even more deadly against calf. Although this unit does have uh, more overall total um, damage most of it comes or half of it comes from base weapon damage so i would take the ap damage above that actually it's actually the same amount okay well whatever almost so we can just recruit two more heavy shillian calf they are expensive and let's get them and then we don't want these um archer militia on the secondary guy let's remove that let's remove that and now this would give me wait look at that look at all that extra movement that you have in this army now like if you wanted to you could just rush shunju look at that you can even reach shunju on turn one what in the actual world because what i've done here is basically removed all the units that are um what do you call it infantry so now i have as much mo bonus for, uh movement but bonus movement uh as possible for my army which means i could engage this army on turn one if i wanted to and sasau's as well and actually you could oh my god so you could just go one two and then take and defeat lushong as well dude what the hell so very important with momentum you do not want to lose battles um when you have high momentum or with momentum because you're going to lose momentum when that happens so just take that into account but anyways what i want to do is recruit Dao Shan because we want her to be part of this army as well and then with her she's going to have perceptive which is going to be great but mainly the main reason why you want her in the army is because she's going to have um remove this remove this there we go we got the backs movement again she has perceptive as well she does have to be leading the army to get the extra 10 percent capture chance for enemy officers That's something we have to take into account but coming back here though we're going to give mr lubu the imperial jade seal and that's going to get me to second marquee and then with second marquee i can get two spies which will let me get both uh guo si and um what do you call it and uh fa seng from lu lu uh yang so two characters that i definitely want to go for now we get these two bonuses here and now we got that marquee level 
And then, as I was saying, I want to get this mission completed so I don't break the mission and I don't complete it. Because if you get peace with Sasa on turn one, this is canceled and you don't get this bonus for 10 turns. Just take that into account if you're trying to replicate what I'm doing. We're going to engage this army right here. And it is a close victory. And then from here, we can just do a fight night battle. And a 61% capture chance. I got 54% base. Let's do this. Very good. And then from there, we can just do the maintain momentum. Note that this uh, higher fatigue level for the army actually keeps stacking. It lasts for one turn, but if you keep doing it over and over and over again, it's going to keep increasing. Now we completed that. And we have to recruit a total of 15 units, which we will do. But now, if you look down here, is where you can see the tired effect one turn. If I engage this army, it's actually going to go back up yet again. We're going to go here. We're going to engage this guy. And then from here, so decisive victory because we have the garrison helping us out. So we're going to delegate this. Good chance of actually capturing him. But then again, um, uh, we didn't capture the first cousin. So I guess we we'll, might have a good chance of capturing this guy. We'll see. But here, actually, we did. And just keep releasing characters. If you execute, you're going to get really bad traits as a faction leader, which we do not want to go through. So anyways, we'll continue here. Reset movement. Very good. And now we got movement. We got tired for two turns. We definitely want to be careful with having that. But now is where the fun begins. You see this Shen settlement that we have over here for Lubu? So we actually want to trade this away um, to Mr. Sao Sao and then basically get it back. So to make that happen, though, um, what we want to do is actually engage uh, or trade the settlement away to Sao Sao. So then we're at war with him and then we can get it back. So we do got these characters very weak from the auto resolves, which is really bad that they are this weak. But anyways, aside from that, we're going to go to Undercover Network. And you're going to see Guosi available. Of course, we want to get him. And then we're going to build Undercover Network. to be able to pull him the next turn. I think we'll actually have enough bonus. I think we need to get to like 35 bonus. Because I think the cover point cost of extracting a spy can go up to plus 10 more. So just wait one more turn before pulling him. We got that guy at the ready for our um, diplomacy. Or sorry, to get him into our faction. Which is one of our targets in Greatest Warriors. But coming back here. Go back. Let's go back to the actual shenanigans with Sao Sao. Now we can actually get peace with him because um, we got this effect of rebel leader active. So coming back to diplomacy, double click him. And then look at this, minus 63 to make this happen. But let's see what I need to give up to make this a possibility. So number one, maximize this one here. The actual um, how much money you're giving across 10 turns because we don't care about that money. And then for food, we only have three more, which we can give away. And then the Shen settlement is the one that he actually selected to trade away. And then here we have two items that he selected randomly. We're not going to basically go for that. And then receive. I think this is not positive right now. We definitely want to uh, fix this first before trying to get this marriage hap to happen. So let's go to trade ancillaries. And then let's just look for items that aren't necessarily part of sets that we're willing to actually part with. So we have horses here. Three horses. And then what else do we have? We have legal uh fanatic which is not bad and then again we ha do have philosopher so we have two great items for satisfaction purposes and then if we keep going down let me see i think there's robo of the omen maker does give 10 more cunning which is pretty nasty and of course weapons are a really good thing to have let's trade all of these away 5.9 so we want we can lower the amount of money actually it doesn't matter if i give them all the money in the world oh yeah dude forget this forget all the ancillaries give him all the money he wants What? That's not, that doesn't make it possible? Oh, come on. Actually, it doesn't even, doesn't even matter how much money I ask from him. Here, get the trade the ancillaries because I'll, I get the ancillaries back. Yeah, I forgot about this. I'm going to trade the ancillaries. Uh, I'm going to get the ancillaries back from him. Where's Muldu's Bell? What the hell? Muldu's Bell? Oh, there it is. And this will actually speed things up a little bit. Let's... actually maximize this and we survive wait ah uh, we can't yeah because it reaches the max cap of money given okay so coming back here though okay there we go so now we got peace with sao sao and let's do this deal right now boom so be it and then with that this mission did not break 
So I think what you can break is not only the first one that appears, but also if you're if you have to defeat Salsa, which is the next mission that appears after this one. So continuing though, now we're at peace with him and he has this settlement. All right, so I've gotten all the money that he has. I've gotten back all of the items that I actually traded to him. So with that out of the way, all that I have left is getting Sal Ren and Sal An into, or brought into my faction. So first marriage is Sal Ren. We don't care about him being um, part of the family, so we can just divorce. And we're going to go here to the family tree. We're going to divorce Sal Ren. He'll be okay in terms of happiness. And now we got the sequence or the honor manifested. So let's go back to this army. I forgot to do this before. Let's give her Red Wind. And for Shen Gong, let's give him his bow. And then, of course, we want to improve satisfaction or cunning as much as possible to these guys. So we go her or over here. She's not going to be a part of the faction lead. So just give her this item. And then we do have Clay Dog. Oh, my God, dude. It's just all these extra bonuses anyways so with that um i don't think there's much else that i can do in terms of improving cunning with all of these guys but anyways we got those bows on them and then for um mr lubu let's give him the one that gives 10 more satisfaction faction wide if i if you actually give him classic of filial piety we can get plus four um, public order faction wide anyways we'll fix our satisfaction issues with that and then coming back to our um diplomatic situation we're gonna go back to sao sao and then we're gonna receive marriage with sao ang and then same thing boom and now we got both of the sao's therefore lowering the characters that he has at his disposal but also we remove one of the retinues that were in this faction or this location here additionally i forgot to do this before we want to definitely put an admin over here that will be pretty strong to have in this position in the early game to basically lower construction costs as much as possible like Zhang Liao. And then from there, be able to be a garrison for us so these armies don't engage. So we do this. We improve the situation here. And then I definitely want to build up here the patrol building, but we're not going to do that just yet. I want to first do a couple more things here, right? We can actually inspire Commandiri as you can see here. Look how nasty this is, dude. Like freaking disgusting. But anyways, continuing though, I'm going to go through all the marriages that I want to do in this early game and basically make them all happen. So again, every single time you marry somebody, divorce. The only families that we want to keep tied to us is Yan Ju from Yan Bai Hu and all the Shis. We do that. We save as much money as possible on characters and we get Yan Yang, Yang Ju possible to be a faction heir, which is the best thing we want to boost up Meliovation faction wide by 5%. Right, coming back to diplomacy here, we have Fa Zeng available for us. And that's somebody that we definitely want to grab. And with that, we're going to get him as well. And then we're going to do this. And then we can actually extract them this turn and actually afford the cost if I actually got the bonus. So now we can get him in the next turn, which is really powerful. So continuing though, we still want to keep going to diplomacy and keep doing marriages and try to marry all of Shiji's faction uh, characters into our own. So we're going to keep divorcing and going to continue here.
All right, so now we finish with the amount of characters that we see here, which is like 31, I believe, in total with the two spies. And in terms of distant relatives, everybody's a distant relative except uh, Zhang Liao, Chen Gong, and then the uh, Gaoshun, the two Saos, and then if we go down, the two Mas, the two Liu's, and that is it. So the total salary upkeep that we have at the moment is only 1k. Yeah, we have 31 characters at our disposal, which is great for utilizing them for administrative positions and for assignments, which means that we can still have enough generals for actually being on the field and still have generals for the other purposes that I've just mentioned. So continuing, it is I've done probably enough already to just basically call it quits in terms of the diplomatic shenanigans. And now it's time to mass declare war on everybody on the campaign which in turn is going to probably drop us to like negative 1k to 2k maybe in um our trustworthiness but with this done we now are ready to start our wars or basically our this is total war campaign which you it will always clock in or be good if you're at war with everybody i think at the start of your turn or end of your turn either or we're gonna declare war on everybody right now to make sure that we are basically in a situation where we are at war with everybody on turn one and because it's lubu we don't have to check ever again Oh, before I click enter, this will be where I'll leave the safe file. Um, so actually after I click enter. So you're basically start all these shenanigans that took up a lot of my time. It took about two hours and 15 minutes of my life to get this set up. You won't have to do that. And then you'll start on a this is total war campaign with 63k in the bank and in a bloodbath to just basically rush and take out a lot of stuff around you as fast as possible. I would say to, to build the communal farms, actually, this turn will be the best thing you can do, um, even though it costs a lot of money. It's actually worthwhile because now you have this big garrison in case anybody engages you. They have to confront that and that'll get them a bit weaker. So aside from that, I think we're in a very good state. Oh, really very, very important for you. Do not, if you see the Han Emperor in a region, do not capture it. If you do, you're stuck with the Han Empire as a vassal and you'll break that this is total war achievement. So just keep that in, in mind when you're proceeding throughout the campaign. You just, you know, you don't make that mistake. So anyways, that is it here. Let us continue. So Cao Cao decided to pay this the rats to hide the snake. So it's going to hurt me trying to pull characters because it's going to cost minus 20 to my overall network game per turn. So it's going to cost the Guo Si to now be at 7. So I can't really pull him. The only time you should try to pull is if you have a net total of about 35. If you have a total of 70 in cover, then you can do build on the cover network and extract spy. by And being able to su succeed in, in one turn. And you're going to have to be able to do that because you can't fail. Else, if you do build on the cover network and then try to extract and you fail, and you have five turns of negative 18 gain, you're going to be stuck there trying to pull people. We definitely want to get Sai out from Liu Biao's faction. We're going to do that. He's at 55, so we're not going to do build on the cover network and extract spy just yet. We're going to wait. It actually costs 20 only for him, so we can just wait till it's at 60, so the next turn, we actually be able to pull him because it's. I think it costs minus five for him to uh to do use cover points. So aside from that, we do want to get to a total of seven momentum. But we also want to deploy good characters to proceed this way to engage these guys. And as I mentioned, these two armies will move forward and they're just now easy pickings to take out with only four generals to engage. But beginning here, we're going to get a couple of characters deployed. So Mr. Janju is very nasty. We definitely want him deployed, but we need somebody that has a 25% campaign movement range like Ma Shui over here. We're definitely going to deploy Fa Sheng. But the first one we want to deploy... It's like Shiwu. He does have 5% replenishment as leader of an army. So let's get him. And then continuing, let's get Fa Zeng. And we're also going to get continuing over here, Jan Shu. So with this, we have pretty good replenishment for all of these units. But what we want to go for is basically maximizing my campaign movement range to only keep the cav units on this army. Now, to get him to move though, I can't really do it right now. But can you? Actually, you can. So what we do is we actually move Shiwu outside of this retinue. And now these guys have movement. And from there, with these two guys, we can actually reach all the way over here. But we're going to have to actually be on Force March. Oh, shit. Wrong one. And to do Force March to actually reach both armies and reinforce... um, What do you call it? Lubu. 
but here we're gonna we can uh we reach the maximal seasonal redeployment so we can't do much there and then irrigated farms we want to build here and we also want to maximize our amount of food produced because we want to build tall we're not gonna have that many minor regions to help us out but continuing here we we're gonna now proceed over here to get um what do you call it these guys moving in force march but for this character he does have 52 percent extra um ammunition for own revenue we will give him a bow and we actually just give him right now the one that uh shengon has so let's go here mulu's bell will go to yan yu actually no yan yu needs to be our faction heir so let's go all the way over here and then get where is yan yu at the hell's yan yu dude i don't see him am i am i fucking imagining shit where the fuck is he oh my god there he is okay make air so now lubu has five percent more um what do you call it melee evasion he starts at 32 percent, so that's great for us and then aside from that we don't necessarily want a uh, lubu to actually be having what do you call it this item there's some great combos that we can actually give let's go back here to mr janju and let's look at the combos that we actually started out with so preservation that's oh, shit the shit fucking sucks we can get a total oh my god oh we don't have book of changes okay continuing though there are some other good ones monopoly we're not gonna be trading forget that martial law we don't care i think we're gonna have to give him a raider Autumn, yep so remove from lubu and then the set is where is it We care about classic of the filial piety, which is there we go. Oop. And then Fazeng, we definitely want him leading this army. So let's give him Shengon's bow. Very good. And then continuing where he already has that over here. Can't really give him much else that is really good. Go up. Oh, that'll be good. Okay. So we got those things. We can definitely give him a better little horsey if in case he gets stuck in a bad situation. And then better weapon. We have constellation, which we don't have that whole set. Nobility, we don't have it. Lord of Fire, neither. And then the Yi. Oh shit, we can actually get spear wall right away. Hardened iron. Oh shit. Ah, but he has a fucking oh, I hate this game sometimes, dude. There is barely anybody here. Give him this bow. Give him this. And then aside from that, nobody else to recruit on this front. And then Masha, we haven't done anything for him. Go on a better horse. Anyways, we gotta continue on this front. So Remain we want to grab these guys. We did get a eunuch. <laughs> um, nothing else to do on this side. Let's actually engage this guy in battle. So let's get these guys moving. And not to be forced to march, I think, for this one. Let's go over here. Very good. And because we, we have very weak army, we can get a lot of heroic victories engaging all of these guys. So we can just try to take out this army right here with Lubu and engage it. And you can see the amount of power is really not in my favor. So let's go over here. Engage. And here we go. It's a Peric victory. Look at that. 51% capture chance for both of these guys. And we're going to be utilizing freaking Fa Zeng and um, Diao Shan to just basically shoot these guys to death to start the battle. Let's go. All right. To begin this battle, Diao Shan is just going to shoot people to death. Chen Gong is just going to hide because he's super weak. So we're going to forget about him. And then we can just put these things around here. This over here. A little bit of power around here. And then we can just actually put it right there. There we go, in case I step on it. Okay. Continuing. Lobo at the front. Little cav units in the back. Can I just fucking hide them? Here. Gashan, stay close. These guys are coming from this way. Let's go. Oh my god, I fucking hate this map, dude. We want this guy at the front. This guy as well. 
Oh my god, dude. Look at freaking mock, man. 8k damage across 60 seconds. I don't think they want to do it this way. Wait, where the fuck are they? What was my deployment? What the fuck? My deployment was inverted, dude. What? Oh my god. What? Alright, whatever. Early game guide, my ass. You know, we're here doing weird shit. Alright. Jesus, dude. Alright, here we go. So... Turn off melee mode on your archers always. We're gonna shoot this guy. And she's gonna shoot this guy. Yep, they don't wanna do it. Come Oh, now he wants to duel, huh? Okay, wait, wait for it to... Okay, well, don't wait for shit. Here you go, Lubu. Blowing up. And both generals are out. Come on. Woo! Fucking Lubu, dude. Yeah, dude. Fucking killing machine, dude. Don't fuck with this dude, man. Look at this. Turn. Turn around. One. It's around it. Very good. Yeah, boy. Sorry, if it's a fucking general. All right, come on. Look, the enemy run, Craven. And you just let Lubu run wild. And you can just rush these units if you want to. And that's it. So you definitely want to at least weaken everybody. So just rush. That's why you want the cav units. So just rush units and take them all out. That way the auto resolve to finish up the army becomes really minuscule. And you just fast forward through it. Especially the trebuchet. Trebuchet has very high combat potential. So just try to weaken them as much as you can.
All right. And with that, we're done with this battle. Let's get out of here. It's actually a close victory, which sucks. So we didn't have, get as much capture chance for all of these guys. The negative is that we have all of these cav units. So that's really affecting our combat potential and really hurting us get, trying to get the heroic victory. But that's okay. And with that, let's see who we captured. Very good. We actually captured both. So get Shunju. He's a great character. And then we can just release the Anwei and release over and over these characters. And then go from there. So there we go. We got five total personal victories. So it's something I need to talk about something that's very important. So look at the personal victories and track it because you're going to potentially lose track of it as you keep progressing. Just look at how many personal victories you have as you go through the campaign. We can still eliminate um, this army that's standing right here with the Anwei. But we can just leave it weakened. And what we can do is um, basically leave him because we're going to grab this settlement uh, coming up. And then we want to get these guys into Force March to be able to reach all the way over here. Let's get on this side. Actually, you know what? Uh, let me see. Wounded. Three turns left. Yeah. Let's see him as he is. Let's go to Sasal now. And again, not a not a difficult battle. Definitely easy. We just got to try to get a heroic victory if possible. And we'll just shoot this guy to death. Let's go. All right. Let's begin this battle. And we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to try to shoot these guys. The really crazy thing is that we have a nemesis with... Sao Sao, so that makes him a really deadly target for uh, Lubu to engage because they both have good bonuses to their damage. And actually, Sao Sao can swipe at Lubu if you really don't strengthen Lubu and get him pretty weak. So just keep track of that. And in here, if we look, he doesn't want to duel, but if he pops an Unyielding Earth, he might actually want to duel. We can potentially try to abuse that in our favor to get a duel off for Lubu and try to take out Sao Sao that way. So let's go this way. Let's get all these characters forward. Definitely care about these two. Put these guys together. Okay, so here we go. You can shoot him. You will die before you achieve competence. Stop wasting my time. You're shooting him. There you go. Steal yourselves. Double time. At the ready. The time has come. Ooh, ooh, abuse it, abuse it, abuse it. Prepare to meet your doom. Really doesn't want to do. That was supposed to scare me. Hurry, move. Go, go, go. Move up quickly. Faster. Come on, take him out. Run, run. Hurry. Prepare. Move on quickly. Your right. name Burn his ass. To history. You lack honor. Run, run, run. Faster. Double time. Move, move. Hurry. Move. March at the double. Burn him, burn him, burn him. You speak well. Nice. Get out. Come on, shoot that bitch ass. Oh my god, dude. This fucking... This thing is so nasty, man. We're really mocking Saza, all right? Ready. At least, fury. Attack! 
Anybody else? Oh shit. Yep. Do not relent. Unleash fury. Ready? No, my fury. No, no, Lassie. The enemy warriors are running. Ha! Stand ready. Stand ready. Strike. The battle. Do attention. Nice. And that is it. Again, Chase. I uh, forget that tower. Actually, you know what? We don't have to necessarily chase and just forget about this army. It should be pretty weak now. All right. Very good. And with that, we have eliminated both of the large armies. Oh, it's still a close victory. So we have eliminated both of the large armies. But additionally, we have seven momentum to grab Jinshu on this turn. And then from there, get the nasty faction council buffs on turn three. All right, there we go. Seven momentum. Excellent. We captured Yue Jin. That's good. And then here, reset movement. And then we get feed at Cao Cao as well. And then look at that. Marquee, 114. And then here, we can go NNX. <coughs> Let's go this way. Boom. Ah, damn, dude. So spy amount is fine where it is. Armies, we don't we're not gonna keep improving because we care about getting as many administrators as possible. So assignments, we can't really get it um as high as I want. Um if I look at admin, let me not confirm this just yet. If I look here, yeah, because I don't have any more admin positions, I kind of have to rush trying to get one more admin than I want in order to have as many admins as I potentially uh can get. So let's do here. Let's see, I definitely want to get 25% more character experience, but Let's see, that'll give me two admin slots, three admin slots, four admin slots, and then minus 10% character salary for all administrators. Let's take advantage of this one for now. And then from there, um, let's see, three, two, there. I think this will be good. So I'll give me three admin slots, and then from there, boom. Four admin slots and two assignments. I think my two and then that'll give me three assignments that i can put for inspire commandiri around where i am and then this one as well i think this will actually be a good quantity at least for now that'll be four admin slots so i can start building the eastern wall of china by doing this and then continue from there i don't have potentially enough assignments all right in terms of point allocation we want to have enough admin slots for the three major regions that i'm gonna try to hold well two and then hula will pass that'll be the third one so that'll give me a good enough basis to operate from. So I think this will be a good quantity to have. Three assignments is a bit of a limitation, but that'll give me three assignments and three admin slots to use because I'm at minus one administrative slots. And I'm playing Lubu. And with that, we look at how this place is built. It is a food making machine. This place is super valuable. And with that, we can get Shishin or Sao Ang to produce even more food locally. And then Shen is another great food hub. We can put Sao An or other characters like Zebu to produce food as well. Giving us all these extra buffs. Han Chung as well, who's a random. I mean, this is just nasty. That's Now, I'm definitely not going to have negative food proceeding with these bonuses. And as for this region, we're definitely going to keep the prestige building prestige buildings built. We can definitely drop the commerce ones that we have built in order to build the garrison building in these regions. I have one more admin slot open. Now, what I want to do here is something pretty disgusting. So, we're going to deploy... Let me go. Let me go over here. Race army. Okay, I can actually do it just yet. So, Mr. Zhang Liao is turn three. Meaning he can get camp crushers. And that is utterly fucking disgusting. We definitely want to abuse that to our advantage. As for um, other commanderies, though, let's look at if we can see. Do this. Attention. Ma Shao has units already. And we'll see. We have a lot of commanders in our faction, but we have a couple of administrators that we can take advantage of. So let's go here. In terms of other admins that we can use, let's go down. Tishi does have 26% construction costs. And just only 17. But let's go here and deploy Shishi on this one. It doesn't need him to have better units though to defend the location. 
But now, um, Salsa has been left without any regions. And we can proceed on a freaking straight path this way. To just basically see if we can capture Sao Sao and go from there. We can't really move any any further here. We have to recall these guys. But here, we can just engage this army and take it out ourselves. He's basically done for. Let's go this way. And then look at that. 73% and he is wounded. And But he does have resilience. So we're going to do this here and just basically leave him with no army left. Very good. Okay. And then if we captured, we captured Jojin again. Release. We could potentially capture him in a bit. So we're good, good movement there. We got two momentum. And we can actually proceed to grab the pension settlements that are this way. I don't have visibility in terms of what Lushong has. But I don't necessarily worry. I can grab the livestock farm. And then basically why you want to grab this region is kind of, kind of neat. So you grab this region or pension basically either or is fine as like defensive hubs like if you actually put enough administrative slots you can cause the ai to kind of like struggle to move forward we don't necessarily want to grab necessarily pension too fast but what we can do is we can go all the way to shen over here and then we can just attack it right and then lushong is here that's okay we can just defeat his ass and see if we can capture some of his items but we engage this region take him out and then from there, we can race it to maximize or bring up our momentum as much as possible. But from there, if the enemy tries to step on it, they might actually just occupy it at a huge cost. Or they'll have to bypass through a region. And then from there, they'll have to just uh, struggle a little bit more to try to reach us. And then we have night battles that we can use. And then we do have Shen Gun that we can actually give the boat to. Let's see. Go over here. Oh no, it's actually unequipped right now. Yeah, okay, forgot about that. But anyways, with that... um. That's okay. We can just proceed here and attack this army and continue. All right. We're going to do a battle here yet again. These horses are going to be useful, but we're going to hide them in the back. Keep these guys safe because they're very weak. But she does have a bow. We can get, um, we can leave Lubu getting shot by Lu Chong's bow or try to dodge it as much as possible. And then we'll go. Okay. We got that. Done. Let's go. He should have a bow, right? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Okay, come on. Fucking cheese, dude. All right, we're for them to come forward, and we're just gonna shoot his ass to death. Nasty little calf unit, dude. Fucking disgusting. Boop, boop, boop. Trickle that ass down, boy. Look at that. The enemy warriors My are god. Make sure he doesn't come back, and if he does, we'll rot his ass. And here, we're going to do what, what I call the nasty. Wait. What? The battle. It's around it. Oh, shit. Focus on that ass. Alright, he's out of his scav unit. That's okay. These guys forward. Hurry. Make ready. 
There we go. So we're lowering the Rage of Lubu to occur 50% faster. And then we're just going to use Rage of Lubu here. Hurry up, boys. We should be almost done here. Let the enemy run! Raven! Oh shit. There we go. And now we've defeated Shen Gun. He's not one of our greatest warriors, but it's still valuable. And if we actually capture him, we can execute for his little nasty bow, and that'll give us three disgusting missile weapons for three strategists to start the campaign and if we get Shun Yu that's somebody with brilliant which will help us get even more ammunition Victory opens many oh doors. god damn it we really didn't get it so anyways we can maximize our momentum so let's get um here the race and then from there this is the really valuable thing you can actually retreat back up back um or actually move at the actual end of a race you still have your remaining action points we can go back up. Let's go this way so nobody can reach us. We won't be able to replenish. But what we're going to do is we're going to recall some of these. Actually, we can just keep these guys. These guys could potentially be engaged by him. But we can actually take them out with... Um, even we're on Force March, we can actually take him out. And in this general, we can just remove for now. And then recall him. And we'll redeploy him to lead this army. And then uh, we can still use Mashal to go towards Hulao Pass in order to actually annex it and then we'll grab all of these regions already by turn three as for a faction council there are some positions that we definitely want to fill up let's look at who's really unhappy so we got Liu Zhang, who's always unhappy he's a freaking problem and then who's got titles let's go this way and we need to go to Zhang Lia. we should actually remove this already and here let's give him way more that and then he is an admin I should have actually given him minus one construction time. Go here. And then for the same for my other admin, which is the she guy. We want to give him another builder slot. Or item. Maximize that. Give him this. There we go. And then as for titles. Let's go to Mr. Zhang Liao, who has one that he doesn't need. And we also got this um, character, Sun Ju, which definitely want to redeploy because uh, he's nasty. He's got freaking brilliant. And if he's an admin, he does give plus five food. Also good. Anyways, coming back to Zhang Liao. Let's get, remove him from that little title he has. He doesn't need it. Boop. And then this guy has the 100 extra happiness. That one, he's still good. And then coming back here. We want to fill Grand Director and um, Grand Tutor. So in terms of characters that are unhappy right now, we got Zhang Liao. Definitely want to make him happier. And there's some others might act that might actually need this as well. Let me see who's level uh, 4. Anybody level 4 yet? No, nobody. Okay. Actually, if we go here and put him in this slot, I think that'll be more valuable. And then Chancellor is 50% more Peasantry. And we'll fill up this slots in the next turn. We don't necessarily care about these other bonuses. But here now we got 17 food. So we're in a very good food situation. We got two food assignments. Minus one construction cost to fill up this area. And then this one as well. Um, we have good construction cost reductions 
Um, we can actually reduce we reduce construction costs a bit more, I believe, right? Hmm. I guess I messed this one up, but that's okay. We can just continue. Let's go. Alright, and here's Dian Wei engaging us. He does have full health, but Mr. Va Zeng, um, he doesn't have his bow anymore. We'll have to just try to engage this guy and take him out with his um ability. Let's go. Alright, let's begin this battle. We have to find wherever the hell this guy is. They know he knows where we are. Come on. With speed. Take heed, warriors. Come on, come on. Once he gets in range, I'm shooting and I'm running away. I have been waiting for you. You be little yourself with your words. Continue to talk, yet I hear nothing but empty noise. Run! Move, move! Kill them! March at the demo! Go, go, go! Move! Faster! Ready! March at the demo! Double time! Run, run! At the ready! Move out quickly! Make ready! Faster! Our men flee the battlefield. Can we make it out? Yeah, we can. Okay. A comrade is being attacked. On tower, kick his ass. So if I do this, right? Really? That's what I want to do? Okay, careful. There we go. We got him. Yeah, boy. Let's get out of here. And with uh, Fa Zeng having uh, patience leading the army in the heroic victory, the envoy should be able to be captured. Okay. Let's go. And with that, boom. And now we got him into our faction. And with that, um, we don't need to reset army points because it's the end of the turn. So we can just do more money. Very good. Very, very good for us.
all right we got minus 20 morale from tubasang's army and then a bunch of diplomatic stuff oh shit so we completed growing might and then we have to destroy sasau's faction and then we reach marquee for two thousand dollars and nice and then now we just need to get emperor of china and defeat sasau's faction there's two other missions right that have to do with liu bei but anyways can oh sh oh can i get both oh 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 hold on hold on okay uh maybe him move him out of the army stop stop okay fuck dude stop okay there we go oh my god oh whoa movement exploit bitches and then, yeah we're gonna get masha all the way over here oh shit we can reach oh what about lubu oh can we reach without oh my god okay so aside from that though starve out this region we'll attack it and we can take out sasao in one what three turns okay now this what is this oh my god dude this is so nasty so we have somebody that has flames of the phoenix now we just need somebody like for example Kaohsiung. where's his ass where the fuck is he up oh he's at the top okay yep let's get Kaohsiung in here Let desire shape and guide passion and then we just need one more character what does this guy have oh we don't need finding fury yeah wait does have unyielding earth which can be really useful okay so if i move this guy out can these guys reach yep you get closer you guys get closer nice we don't have to win do the actual battle manually but this region we don't care about actually acquiring it because it's it's a minor region and we care about playing a bit more defensively so we let the ai come towards us so we got that done let's get back into force march go over here we can recall this guy and then recall all these units to save money oof we got visibility all the way over here oh so we actually can rush oh we can rush nanyan and then build it as another defensive fort so we get basically get nanyan jinshuan and then hulao pass as our defensive front if anybody pushes from these areas Oh, we can reach oh because remove the units okay okay Welcome, my lord. but with that is we can keep these guys deployed but they don't have reach so maybe not Fuck this Who calls? and then here we're gonna engage this location and we have eliminated sasa before turn two so he's not gonna be able to pop the faction council mission on us oh yes actually i don't think is he even a marquee at this point because he was pretty damn well he might have actually started already a marquee i'm not even sure Let's go. All right, so let's put my Xian, disgusting Xian Marauders around here. Put this guy over here, and then let's wait for Lubu. Yeah, boy. So most important units we want to take out is the G Infantry Captains. So, oh, I didn't give the bow to Shangon. Well, we're going to give it to Fazen. So here, she's going to shoot at... The G Infantry Captain. Come on, come on. She's done. Run, 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 faster, unleash fury. 
Nice. There we go. Mon. Take heed, warriors. Unleash fury. Take heed, warriors. Yeah, we can go through there if we want to. Go, go, go. Nice. Move, move. Move Hurry. Don't get shot. Fuck that one up. Come on, come on, come on. Well, she got hurt, but that's okay. Make Lubu go crazy now. And look at that 2.9k damage there. Oh, Jesus, dude. There we go. That should do it. All right. Pretty dirty win, but we got it. South South eliminated. Damn, dude. Freaking crazy. What is this? Turn number three? Oh, jeez. All right. And with that, he is done. So the race is the most valuable thing that I could do. I already got 10 momentum, which is great. But with the 10 momentum, it means that I could have actually initiated. Um, What do you call it? I could have actually initiated an Inspire Commandiri before this battle. It is what it is. We couldn't do it. But with this now, we can raise this location or utilize it. There could be somebody that actually attack us, attacks us this turn. So I'd say that racing might be the best thing that I can do. I don't really care too much about the replenishment here with these units. So let's do this. And if somebody occupies it, we'll get it back. It there we go. So nice, Salsa has been defeated on turn three. And now we have to destroy Lijue's faction, which is like all the way to the freaking northwest. But aside from that here, we need to try to retreat as much as we can. Back up. And then with Lubu's army as well. Let's go this way. And we have 10 total momentum already, which is just disgusting. And then here with this army, we do have the when near appears. Let's remove this. Let's remove this. And we got these places getting built up. Um, let's get on this one grain storage, maybe. Let's do this. No, hold on, not grain storage. I don't really care too much about the reserves. We got those. Oh, right. What am I doing? The construction building. The military building. There we go. And now we got two massive commanderies with oh my god, with everything getting built right now. And then race army. We can't we don't have any more seasonal revenue deployments, which we definitely want to actually increase as much as we can. We got those done. We want to get as much food as we can. There we go. And it's 25% more food. Bam. So we're at 33. And we're staying pretty positive with the overall food situation. And from there, if you actually want to play negative food, you can as uh, Lubu. You just need to put Guo Si as Prime Minister or Air. 
to actually make it be uh, able to actually make it happen. So anyways, I think we're in a very good situation here in terms of settlements. We're not keeping any minor ones. And then if you want to just push on a direct line with a secondary army to take out Li Jue's faction, you actually can uh, do so. And then just rush to eliminate, of course, Li Jue as a greatest warrior. But Lu Bu has to stay around this area because a lot of factions are going to come our way. And the key here is to engage as many, as many of them as possible. So nothing else that we can do with spies and over here Ooh, stop clicking peace man okay there we go and that is all let us continue all right to begin this turn we have the faction council available it is spring 195 let's f oh dude what in the actual bro we got sal sal oh my god what what okay so about this um yeah look at this counselor demonstrant okay anyways stop, stop stop clicking random shit oh my god this game is broken the game is officially broken dude who the hell fuck is unhappy what Is there any other uniques that we can put into these positions that we care about? Well, there's Dion Way. That'll make him happy. Oh my god, bro. What in the actual fuck? This is a weird ass court. That is all I have to say. I mean, just look at this thing, man. Look at this court. What? You know, I might just put this guy up. Uh, what do you call it? His faction air. No, I'm, I'm fucking around. So yeah, we he does have Shadow Runner, which means he has very high cunning. We can give this to um, what do you call it? We can definitely give this to uh, Diao Shan or somebody else. And aside from that, though, I mean, the faction council positions, Chen Gun is just raiding. And then here, we can reset the skills of Dian Wei. Um, but we don't care about doing that. And then we have, oh my god, agricultural focus. And then 200% char character experience for that character. Let's see what good roles we can get. Dian Wei, roll. Yu Zhang, we don't care. Can we get Lubu? Ma Xiao? Nothing. Nope. Show. Yan Yu. Ooh. Maybe we'll get Lubu. That's all I care about. All right. So I kept rolling this until I got what I wanted. So I got a Yan Yu uh, character skill tree reset. See if we get a good one. And then aside from that, we're going to get the 10k population growth faction wide and 200% peasantry income. That doesn't change. And then from here, if you want the other economic one for industrial and commerce, you kind of have to remove the rest of the penalties here, like the Quell Dissidents and Commandiri in uh, Jing Xuan. If you want to actually get this uh, place fixed as well. So you just have to basically try to roll this as much as you can. Actually, you know what? Let me actually re-roll this again. There's Yan Ju still. He does have pretty good traits, actually. We can just keep him as he is. And Andrea, we don't care about. Here, can we get Chen? Let me see. I think we might be able to roll Chen. There we go. Let's get Chen because that one's really where the enemies are going to be coming from. And then get the food here. And then Yuan and Jen. We don't really care too much about her. So we can just select this for Liu Biao to really weaken him. And then here we don't necessarily care about spawning the... Actually, we can prevent um, Gong Sun San or hurt Gong Sun San by spawning this. And we do have the bug fix mod. So this actually is going to work. We can just do all of this and really mess with the AI. And then keep these selections. And from there. Boom. Minus 700 and upkeep went back up. And then if we look at this region. The garrison. This place got better. A uh, better garrison. Garrison level increased. I'm not sure if it actually increased. Huh. Weird. Okay. So anyways. With that done. We don't necessarily have to build anything else in these regions. 
What we care about now, though, is actually proceeding this way um, with Mashao. And let's get a bit more replenishment. And then this one as well. We want to be able to reach all the way over here. So what we care about is causing the AI to move towards our own regions. So, oh, look who's there. Again, again, what? What are you saying, dude? Let's get the Oshan deployed. So this guy's pretty hurt. We don't necessarily need him um, with us. What is this? Just remove him from here. And then we care about two very specific people. Yaoshan. And then Faseng. And then she has her bow. He doesn't have his bow because I took it off. Let's give that. And then... Yeah, let's give it boost up his expertise. And then for her... Nothing really that she can wear. No horsey. Well, actually, yes, there is. So we can give him Sal Sal's weapon. Trust of God. And then we can give him Shadow Runner as well. I don't have a Jade Horseman, so I can get 30 more charge bonus for own army. That's okay. And aside from that, we can get patience if we want to to capture her because she has those axes, which are disgusting. Let's appoint him as general so we get the patience. And then we want him to definitely attack us. So let's get Masha. Peace. Let's put him over here. And 100% already. I mean, she'll attack us no matter what. And then over here, he hasn't deployed anybody on this front. And we can't really recall... I might be able to get away with this. Oh my god, dude. What expensive man okay i hate sasa man he just has caused me to just be stuck with these guys but that's okay they're pretty nasty but with that no stop clicking peace dude okay so with that boop, 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 boop. let's put this here i don't want to ambush yeah i messed up with the ambush here because i moved too much towards them but i can then potentially be able to reach this settlement the next turn Go over here to restore and we could be able to we should be able to reach pension as well okay very good so with that we do want to set up one army over here um to move towards uh in a straight line towards Li Jue to basically eliminate him for the next faction council mission so we're good here and with that oh yeah we do want to get extra 10 percent replenishment that's a must-have okay we got that so we're at 43 percent at the moment with the current momentum that we have and we should be able to proceed in this direction. Let's get a couple more people. Let's get Yan Yu, of course, because we do want him in every army. And we reach the Sino deployment max count. So we're good there. We need to get to a uh, regional city. Of course, these bridges, these bridges should not be built tall. Let's just give them as they are. That is it. Let's go. All right. To begin this turn, we go here. There's no new characters. Yeah, because I saw the name appeal as people of merit. And then, oh my god, Sangdeo leveled up. Holy shit, dude. Oh my god. This is utterly fucking disgusting. Give him Mulu's Bell, man. Let me just show you how powerful this is, okay? We're gonna deploy him to support. Here. Get these weak-ass units. Make sure we get as much movement as possible. And then we're gonna put him to reinforce. Right over here. That's a much stronger enemy. And then we're going to see Lubu's power. Okay. So we, we can't see it yet. We got to get into the battle first. And then we got 47 morale. 47 here. Okay. So 37% cap capture chance to get... um, What do you call it? Yeah, um, Senjan. And if we get a heroic victory, then that's where we're really going to be doing pretty good. Let's go. All right. I'll move some generals on this side. Let's get the little... Here. This over here. Okay, and then hide the cav units. Actually, move them over here. Okay, so let's actually group up everybody. Uh, going this, right here, and then these two together. Turn off guard mode, and then all four of you together. Okay. Yep. Fast forward. Very good. 
and there's a forest in between us so i shouldn't be engaging um directly i need to do like a merry go around like this way okay now, does she have any spear units doesn't seem like it so i can just do a head-on rush if i want to but to begin both of y'all shoot over here but oh stop fast forwarding if you can shoot her to death the ready. China. god damn that's some fucking nasty ass range dude what look at this slope man bro what yo shen what the fuck do you have here you live until now comrade is being attacked attack you are weak the battle yes stand ready kill them at the ready to battle ready show them justice show them justice show fury Steal yourselves! Go! Go! Charge! Do not relent! Strike! I honestly expected more! The enemy warriors are running! And over here, chase all these units off. What are you missing? Oh, here. There we go. All right. Freaking nasty, dude. All right, we're done here. Close victory. Really? Come on, man. I gotta disband some of these Gav units. So we might be able to capture her. We're gonna see about that. And oh, we got her. Ladies and gentlemen, we got her. So we did murder two people that were her friends. So that might just piss her off in terms of wanting to join our faction if we actually destroy her faction. So that's kind of important. Um, she does have red sisters, which is nasty. And if we're able to get her to join our faction, that'll be great. Um, but we can just take out her faction and then see what happens. I think that, you know what? Just execute. Don't even take your chances on trying to grab her. It probably will be like mission impossible. And red sisters. Well, then again, you have Lubu. You don't need anything else like she, she's fucking, it's enough dude so just do this and if you do get you do get her then that's great so she is wounded okay so with that out of the way what i wanted to verify is um and this is kind of broken if it's actually working we can move this guy to be a separate army oh wait before doing that we go here to assignments we can't really do inspire commandiri we can't really use momentum for much else except maybe for happiness if we wanted to but we don't even need that but yeah kind of broken at the moment um but coming back on this front we can potentially engage her yet again moving out and then go here and then 49 percent capture chance nice and we didn't capture her this time that's okay and then there's still this army that we can take care of and that will eliminate um lu shang uh from us so we can go here nope we're gonna attack and that's a close victory delegate and with this we have yet another location that we can utilize for an administrator and for defensive purposes 
So I'd say we can do an occupation here. Let us make use of it. Now, of course, we don't know what, what's now coming our way from here. But now we have Xia Pi on our front, Huainan on this side. We're coming back on this side. So we need to build this place up. So let's get an admin here. Go down. Hmm. Keep going. And then for this admin, let's go down and give her... That's not what I'm looking for. Let's go down... Here she is, dude. Okay. And then let's give her... Does she have builder? There we go. And then what can she get that has good expertise? Here. There we go. And then with that... Let's go back on this front, and we want to build this place up ASAP, even if it costs me, like, an arm and a pickle. Um, this. And then with that, we want to build up the defensive um, capabilities of the location. She does have a very small retinue that she needs to get better. And then more prestige. How much are we at right now? Duke, a little bit more and we get it. But let's build up the defensive building. We don't care about this one. We can keep this one for now. Um, but continuing though. Where, where are we at? All these units. And then her. We're going to deploy her. Where is she? I shall not waver. Replace. Replace. And then we need better units here. So a bunch of these guys. And then we're going to recall her. Deflect with shield. Very good. Two arms. Mashao has leveled up. Fatigue resistance would be good. Conscription also with extra melee damage. I'd say that here. We can just keep brushing this way to internal blaze. Yeah, we can just rush from the north, from the top. Okay. Very good. Follow the heart. And then we'll build the prestige building here. Very good. And we'll get this revenue built up. And then what I wanted to verify is, if I move him out of the army, then I deploy Cao Cao. Where the fuck is he? Oh my god, does he have Nemesis? Oh! Oh, no way! Holy shit, dude! What the actual fuck, man? Oh, that is so nasty! Oh, that is so nasty. That's it, dude. Fucking GG, man. Okay, I think I'll just finish the early game guide here. So, literally, it, you have Poison Blade now with freaking Lubu. You have Fa Zeng in the house also to help you out. You have to be careful when the enemy comes in with night battles. That's kind of like the big thing you have to watch out for. But, dude. Fuck. Dude, whatever, man. Like, literally, whatever. You have an Oathsworn. And you have a uh, a guy giving nemesis to Lubu. So his stats are just going to go freaking bonkers. And then, wait. Oh, shit. I removed the... What the fuck is the item that gives more satisfaction? Oh, right. I took that off. Oh, my God. I'm special. Yeah, that'll help a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, so you got nemesis, Oathsworn. And then with nemesis, he's got 50% more freaking AP damage in battle. What? What? Yeah, dude. Okay. GG's, man. So that'll be it. That'll be it Um, here, at least. I think with this done now, we leave in a situation where you have a lot of potential to expand or to just defend from while you build up an army and just keep pushing northwest in this direction. Personal victories are now at 21. So it's at 40. It, the post-battle load income goes up by 2, it appears. And then prestige, maybe like 2.5, it goes up. Um, it seems like it actually been multiplied by the personal victories. So if you get to like, what, a uh, hundred personal victories, you get the 250 prestige. So you have to defeat as many enemies as possible with Sao Sao's army. But now we've got very good defenses across many regions. We just have to basically build up the retinues of, of each of these guys. Salnia, we definitely want to be deployed though. And then here we can definitely um, 
get this retinue. We have the Xenoblade deployments already maxed out. So yeah, building the army to go towards Hulao Pass. And then Pensheng now has a defensive location. And in here, we can rush to defeat Sanjen if we want to. See if she wants to join our faction. You could, you could have just executed her if you wanted to. But I'll leave that safe file for you to utilize. But you're in a very good state. And this is Total War campaign to do whatever the hell you want to. And you have great characters as spies that you can pull. You, you know, if you didn't get hit by the damn freaking spy thing by Sao Sao. So anyways, that is it here. I really want to thank y'all for watching. And I hope to see y'all on the next one. Bye-bye.